Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one we are once again revisiting jungle decision making. Except this time we are going to have a look at how you can give that special attention not only to all three lanes but also to the enemy jungle that no doubt needs to learn their place. And obviously you will see we are finally using the demonic hellspawn known as Shaco. I figured given that I insult its player base and the champion so much we might as well actually make a good video about him. However being everywhere and putting the fires out all over the map getting yourself really juiced making sure the enemy jungler doesn't get to play the game and ensuring that no matter what the lane states you can still kill them and get objectives that's a really big job and you would have seen on screen now a whole bunch of junglers that can play this game exactly the same whether you're going through walls or around them really quickly like Hecarim the goals and the principles transcend the champion so as always if you enjoy these decision making tests please do consider leaving a like and of course subscribing don't forget to comment what scenario you would like to see in the next one and now without further hesitation let's begin right and at the start of the game you will see the ranks you will see the runes and unlike similar games on korea we do not have any nonsense level one no one's trying to juke it out no mechanical fist fights and no cheese strategies which is actually kind of nice i do think in solo queue unless you are the one making that call it's better to avoid all sorts of weirdness so that your jungle pathing can simply be big brain and you can use it against the enemy jungler without having this randomness corrupt your secret plans and clever tricks. Now as we covered on the gameplay channel there is a great clear that lets you get level 3 red side with Shaco quite fast. We see that the Orn will show late to lane indicating a Kha'Zix red buff beginning and the Shaco decides you know what I'm gonna simply do red and Raptors together kinda and then do my Krugs. As soon as he has finished these Krugs what do you think his first game plan should be? sequencing up to the top side, invading the enemy jungler at the blue, or ganking bottom lane or mid lane. Yes, in this situation, I think using Shaco's tricks and his ignite to get invading on the enemy jungler is step one. If you want to roam freely on the rivers, if you want to roam freely out farm them and gank their lanes, then you need the enemy jungler to not be a hassle. The best way to make them not a hassle is to counter jungle them and kill them at level 3. Other junglers like Volibear and Lee Sin and so on can still do this with different pathing and timing it slightly differently. The goal is the same. And now at this point, the thing is, you don't know if the Kha'Zix did a red side clear into a full. You don't know if Kha'Zix wants to do a buff buff grump. You don't really know his exact timings. Do you think it's a good idea to simply wait for the Kha'Zix? Well, yes and no, we have to consider a few things. This means a little bit of patience will be rewarded, but at the same time, observe bottom lane. We won't actually have their perspective, seeing as the replay is lost to time and space because of Riot's system, but you can see on the minimap that there is a fight. However, this patience and cheese strategy works out very well. This is also something that's really good in solo queue. The Kha'Zix did not defensively warp properly, bottom lane didn't consider helping him out, and he just walks into the trap, loses his flash, and dies. Points for cheese, points for patience, and points for good pathing, knowing exactly where he started and where he wants to end up. However, after this, do you think he should simply do the grump? Should he simply float on down and do the bottom crab, look to gank mid and the top crab? Or potentially, should he simply leave the blue and gank the bottom lane? Yeah, while he chooses to do the grump, I don't think that's the right play whatsoever. You know Kha'Zix died is heading to the top side. You can see the HP levels on the Jinx and Thresh. You have a Brahm alive, you definitely have enough damage in your kit to make sure you get the free double. The thing is, to get yourself truly fed, you have to avoid the coin flip scenarios that cost you your topside camps, which means he can simply do the grump, do the crab, and then make another decision. The problem is, in your lower elo games, even up to like a D3, D2 game, this might tilt them into oblivion, and he was even spam pinged in the game. So this decision I don't agree with, keep that in mind, always look at your options, keep your maps and F keys active so that you can see what's going on. But nevertheless, we got a kill, we got a blue, we got a grump, we got a crab. Where do you go next? Mid lane gank for the Oriana into a double crab on the top side? Or do you consider doing your raptors and krugs and then going back to base? Alternatively, do you do your raptors second tier spawn by the way, and then sequence upside? Here is where things get a little tricky. He decides to finish his Raptors for a bit more gold and then go back to base. Normally I would ask, do you want to go top side or bottom side? However, in this case, it's pretty obvious you want to head to the top side. All three of your camps should supposedly be there. However, you might have noticed I removed the Kha'Zix's point of view after he died. And if you were a true jungle main, you were watching the Shaka's minimap this entire time. And let's rewind it to see what he did. The Oriana warded upside from her mid, knowing full well that once the Kha'Zix died, everyone on the map knows this, Kha'Zix will have to leave his base, go top crab, and look to counter jungle the Shaco's blue and grump. Because Kha'Zix noticed this, he used very good pathing. 
tied against the wall right to the edge and then used his E to hop on over, which means the Shaco had no indication whatsoever that the Kha'Zix was in this place. Yes, you could afford to simply sequence upside, but you would have run into the Kha'Zix 1v1 unexpected and he would have a longsword on you. Which means while you might think it's a great beginning and you pat yourself on the back, you take your second tier Raptor spawn, you go back to base, you have to assume that the Kha'Zix, especially at this level, would not have walked across vision. But upon finding it all gone, you hit the plant to get vision, undoubtedly this will hit the Kha'Zix, so what do you do? Chase him and hit him with some bug spray? Maybe gank top lane, gank mid lane, or simply cry and then do your wolves in sequence down. If you said cry, I'm ashamed. If you said chase, I'm disappointed. Ganking top lane here is your best bet. Look at the Orn, not full HP, but a lot of resources. However, you do have a Nah, you are Shaco, and you have a huge item advantage over the laners. Also, this video is about being everywhere, ganking every lane, and making sure you, yourself, other 1v9 carry. And when we do gank it, if Nar isn't ready or if it's warded, just do your damage, retreat, hold it a little bit, and then you can go back in as Shaco. This is specific to him, specific to champions that are fast, that can really have a quick turnaround. And it means we kill the Orn. Now please understand, the next phase is dependent on elos, understanding wave states, when to push and when not to. We have the Nar here, when you ganked, already had a juicy 6 minions in front of him. There's also another wave that you simply cut and take yourself. It also means because it's early game, the Orn can TP in and pull the wave before it hits the tower, leaving Nar in a bit of a precarious situation. Whereas alternatively, you could have just left it alone, let the Orn TP and repeat ganked him. Right, we've had a great gank, what do we do next? Do we simply go and investigate the Kha'Zix's jungle, or do we head on down to our wolves and then continue sequencing? Yes, in this case, I think we want to head on down, do our wolves, and potentially set up for the Raptors, for the Krugs, and for a red buff. However, part of being everywhere and being in every lane is understanding that sometimes your impact might not be immediate, as with bottom lane and mid lane, but simply reactive and understanding power spikes. Orianna is a great gang to have at level 6, so we employ the same tactics we did with top lane. Gank the Syndra, get some spells, go back, clear the vision, get level 6 from the Raptors, and then simply walk right back into the lane. You can do this with any jungler, really. Orianna has ultimate, you get backstab, she dies. Now here's a very important question as you watch the health bar explode in a frozen frame. Do we, after the gank, head to the top side or to the bottom side? And for this I need to break out a map. Because you killed the Kha'Zix after doing a 3 camp into the blue, you forced him topside, he took your blue and grump, he also took the scuttle. 99.99% he did his tier 2 raptors and krugs before going back to base. How do we know this? Because the wave was in a really bad spot after I ganked top lane, and Kha'Zix chose not to go and gank and abuse the knob because he simply could not. This means 1000% Kha'Zix would have gone back to base or simply sequenced down to the bottom side. He gets a first spawn wolves, he gets a second spawn grump, he can catch up just a little bit. Now our Shago decides, you know what, let me go to the top side crab. However, don't be too concerned about your red buff, don't be too concerned about your Krugs. Your bottom lane went low and went back to base, you know the Kha'Zix sequence down and is most likely in the area. If he chooses to invade your red, if he chooses to do the dragon, he has a Jinx and a Thresh primed to obliterate you. There's no point even going to that side of the map. So because there's an RNG crab, we secure it, what do you think our Shago should do next? Go to top lane again? Simply fall back to his blue side camps, Grump and Wolves? or maybe even invade the enemy jungle's red. I think in this case, I definitely want to go scouting, because there are two things you can actually accomplish. If you haven't seen the Kha'Zix since the blue buff invade, what we can do is assume he's sequenced down, but we don't know for sure. By hitting the plant onto the red buff, we can confirm he's not doing it, and we can see if he has done the raptors at all. If he has, we know he's most likely bottom side. I think in most games, it's a good idea to go for this counter invade while you suppose he's on the bottom side. If he shows up, you can hit the plunge, you can queue over, you can escape. But you created that prior by actually killing the Syndra who has no TP. And as soon as Kha'Zix takes the dragon, which you can see, you might have even been able to counter jungle his highest tier camps. As you can see, he decided to do the Grump, go back to base and spend his gold because of that counter jungling earlier and the fact that he took the wolves later, the Grump and the wolves are not unified. This upsets my OCD camp sequencing, but it's okay because the quadrant is clear as you reset. Now we're anticipating maybe there's an invade of my red buff. When you see it's located, what do you do next? Stand and slap the red buff over the face and enjoy his essence? Maybe do a full red side clear before ganking mid lane again? Or do you simply do the red buff and then look to invade the Kha'Zix's blue again? Or none of the above. And I hope you said none of the above because this is about being everywhere with high kill participation. We have a huge lead. We are 3-0. 
I'm gonna go straight to bottom lane as it's the only lane that hasn't had tender care and attention. Also, the fact of the matter is, we knew the Syndra was missing, and we only saw her once we checked the red buff. And yes, I understand you didn't have that information available to you, but it's about questioning what your original plan is, and then having that new information to change your process. Adaptability, which is why that's one of the most important videos I've ever released. And I'm a teacher, I'm not really trying to trick you, I'm just trying to make you think. Sorry. Yes, but after that, 100%, we take all our camps, we go all the way up, we make sure everything's on a nice rinse pattern, and then we can look to simply gank the top lane again. No question, just standard stuff, pure map control, let the Kha'Zix worry about his own business, he is just so behind on tempo, he cannot afford to fight you. Our Shaco stays for a plate, forces a TP again, and then goes to the Herald. Is this a good decision, yes or no? Yes, yes it is, we have mid lane prior, Nara is there to help, we want to maximize early play goal to get ourselves a further lead, and even though the Kha'Zix picked up a kill on the mid lane, we do not want him controlling objectives, we removed him level 3 and he needs to remain thus. Don't hang around for your camp, simply go back to base, and now do we head to the top side, or to the bottom side? 100% bottom side, there's going to be a dragon spawning, we need to use our herald, and look at that, our bottom lane is actually pushed up, making that a difficult gank. You could look to do that, however, Orianna's ultimate is up. Let's use that, let's kill the Syndra. Gank him map first, farm as a reward. But now, do we use the herald mid lane, do we go top lane, or do we head to the bottom lane? This is actually a little bit of a difficult decision, because you could use the Herald. You don't get all the plates, you get some plates. You also know that the Dragon is spawning on Kha'Zix's top side, which means you could throw the plates down and then head to the bottom lane, but top lane really isn't a position to help you out whatsoever, and he's the most fed lane with the Orianna and you. Your bot lane is the losing lane, you did sacrifice them on purpose. Being everywhere and getting the most kills means sometimes you have to do that because you can pay them back later. So as Kha'Zix went to the top side, we kind of know all his camps are down, the Shaco didn't really have to check, but it's worth doing. Kill the Orn, use the Herald, take the top tower, force the wave to shove, give Nar huge macro pressure, you've elevated the game state. The trade for this, as you can see, is giving the second dragon to the Kha'Zix, it's letting your bot lane die again, and potentially losing your bottom side camps. Fortunately, because you made that play, you can actually afford to take away a chunk of Raptors, if the crab wasn't there, you could do your grump and what have you. And this is where the concept of being everywhere really gets in the enemy's head. You finish the wolves, you see the map as it is, what do you do? Do you go back to base or do you do something else? Verbalize to something else, what exactly would you do? You needed to activate a little jungle intuition and thinking the Kha'Zix probably took your raptors as you saw and most likely would have taken your red, as you can anticipate. Therefore, basing is great, but it's way too passive. The intention is to take as red. If information shows itself to you like their whole team being there, you simply don't. You leave. It's fine. But if you can see the Kha'Zix going across mid lane, Nash saw the red as he went to the bottom side because you created that pressure, you know by spam ganking top lane and taking the tower there, then not only do you get to take the red, but you can also cheese the Kha'Zix and kill him 1v1. This is that concept that's very important. Looking where the jungler is, what does he want to do? Can I beat him to it? And then can I kill him for it? Retreat to safety, take everything in your path, secure your top quadrant, go back to base, and now, do you head top side or bottom side? This is an easy one. Yes, we head to the bottom side. Bot lane has not received much assistance from us. We kind of sold them out a little bit for personal gain and experience. We gave all of our help to the top lane and to the mid lane. We know Anar has TP, so that means instead of doing your camps again, we need to go and kill the Jinx, kill the Thresh, get that tower, and position deep vision for the next dragon, because if you give away two for free, you are looking for four of a kind. Giving them a third will nullify a lot of your entire game plan. As you can see, it's a very close fight, and now I had to TP to make it possible in your games. If you're duo with someone, of course, this is easier to make, but the concept here is still the same. Try and impact bottom lane, use your fighter build, make sure you survive, and then, of course, because there's a long time for the dragon still, we can sequence our camps upward quickly, and then set up for a herald. This is around 17 minutes, so it's kind of useful for a good push. Do you think this is a good idea, yes or no? Yes, I think it's a good idea. I think we should take this. It suits my playstyle. However, when you are a shocker, when you are an assassin, sometimes these games rely heavily on your ability to kill people. Now, in lower elos, if you're Turbo Giga smurfing on people and you simply want to have a bit of fun, you can do what our shocker does. Try and set a trap, dive between two towers, get a double kill, make sure you survive. If you give shutdown, that's not good. The whole thing is knowing your limits and testing your damage output and tankiness. The thing is though, I much would have preferred simply forcing a good fight over the Herald where you can do this anyway. You get an objective, you can use it mid lane to break the map, 
and then you get the dragon as well. However, if you choose to go for a snipe to get some more kills to basically demoralize the enemy, that's fine. But some of your team might be forced into the fight and they might die. Just make sure you are alive so that you can get that dragon. And once you've done that, you can fall back, clear that quadrant, reset, and look to put the finishing touches on this game. But the fact that you live means that if you have a little bit more gold necessary for a huge item, it's okay now to stay out, clean up those cams, and then reset. Just understand, as you can see in this situation, when you do that, you allow the enemy the time to make a pick, and then try and sneak a Baron away from you. That is the downside of simply going back earlier and spending your gold for whatever you can get, However, the big item now means that you can contest it or not. Would you do it, yes or no? Yes, as the final question in this video, yes, 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 you are super fed, know the limits of your champion, get in that pit. If I'm jungle Zyra and I'm this far ahead, oh yeah, it's solo queue, we do not want to give them a Baron, I'm simply walking in, killing everyone because I know I can. And that's the most important thing about this style of play. You have to know what you can do, you have to know that you're ahead, and you have to be able to use it. As you can see, Shaco does. Full cleanup, amazing damage, ridiculous tankiness because of his fighter builds and the Steric's gauge coming in huge. The Triforce is an interesting one, but as you all know with Shaco, build a mythic, choose whatever you like. You can look at the KDAs as we skim through the rest of the game, which are simply picks and closing with tower smashing, nothing really interesting worth discussing. That he really did this himself. The Nar had great presence, 414, nicely done in lane. The Orianna pressed ult a few times, thank you very much. Bottom line really didn't do anything, but you did go to that lane and help them out. However, because of the selfish nature of the pathing at times and the fact that you juiced yourself with experience and gold, you are the one that has the responsibility to win the fights, to pick the fights, to get the objectives, and to close the game. For simple macro on this, I've talked about it a lot on the gameplay channel, as well as my video on closing games early last week, so I'll slap all of those in the description for you. I hope you were able to get a couple right, let me know how you did, let me know what you want for the next topic. Thank you very much for watching, please do like, share and comment if you enjoyed and perhaps learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well as the gameplay channel for all your champion variety. Make sure your beard's decision making is on point and as always I will see you all in the next tutorial.